I would invite you tonight to open with me, please, this time to the book of Mark, Mark's gospel and chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. I was reading uh, the gospel of Mark recently and uh, just uh, the account of the blind beggar, Bartimaeus, whom, of course, Jesus restored his sight to him really grabbed my attention. I wanted to share. There's some powerful truths, really, in this incident that uh, I think we need to consider tonight. Um, lessons from Bart, I guess you'd say, right? Well, let's have a word of prayer. And, uh, well, let me read the verses, and then we'll pray. I'm picking up in verse 46, reading down to 52. Mark 10, 46 says, And there came to Jericho, as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight, and he followed Jesus in the way. It's a wonderful account, isn't it? Let's bow and ask the Lord to speak to our hearts. Today. Our Father in heaven, we're just so thankful for the record that we have here of some of these wonderful uh, interactions that Jesus had when he walked this earth with needy people like this blind beggar. Lord, we pray that just the, the simple truths that yet are powerful truths that uh, are inherent in this uh, encounter would really speak to us and uh, grip us and uh, use it to have your way in us, Lord. Increase our confidence in you as we see the way in which this man believed you and you rewarded his simple childlike faith. We will ask you and your blessing upon this time as we see that as our greatest need now. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to look at verse 47 again with me. Uh, because this is the first truth that I would share with you tonight, where he is told, stop crying out to Jesus. Be quiet. They probably would have said in our uh, uh, vernacular, shut up. And the Bible says that not only did he begin to cry out, but when they tried to shut him up, he cried the more a great deal. The first truth that I would uh, want you to think about tonight is the need like this man to persistently pursue Jesus. Persistently pursue Jesus. Because whether you realize it tonight or not, you and I need Jesus more than we need anyone or anything else. Someone said the desperate times call for desperate measures. And you know, when nothing else is left, you realize that Jesus is the greatest treasure that you and I can ever have. And Bar uh, our friend here, Bar uh, Bartimaeus, he was not a passive beggar sitting by the wayside, sitting by the roadside there. He was attentive. He was tuned in. He had curiosity. He was inquisitive as to what was happening around him. He heard these sounds going on, and uh, uh, it revealed to him 
something special is happening. This is not just a, a normal uh, group that is passing by. Something special is going on. And so it sparked questions in his mind. And he is not hesitant at all, but he's very bold to ask, what's going on? And uh, as a result of that, he discovers that Jesus is passing by at that moment. And he realized that this was his chance. And so he immediately cries out, and he cries out as loud as possible and doesn't stop until he has Jesus' attention because he knew that that was his only hope. Persistently pursue Jesus. Do whatever it takes to get to him. Whatever it takes every day, do it in order to come into contact with the Lord Jesus. Because if you don't, each day, you've wasted a day. And you've missed some wonderful opportunities, really. So do whatever it takes to get to Jesus every day. Persistently pursue Jesus. Look at verse 48 of Mark chapter 10. Again, many tried to silence him, charged him that he should be quiet, hold his peace. But that simply made him cry the more a great deal, as we see it in that 48th verse. Here's a second truth that I want to draw from this incident of the blind beggar Bartimaeus. And that is, not only persistently pursue Jesus, but ignore, ignore the opinion of others. Ignore the opinion of others. They thought in that day that if someone was blind, it probably was because God was punishing them for sin. And blind people and lame people and people that were beggars, people that couldn't earn a living in that uh, society were ostracized. They were marginalized. They were looked down upon. They were ignored. Point here is never let anyone prevent you from getting to Jesus. In your persistent pursuit of him, ignore the opinion of others. It doesn't matter what their opinion is. It doesn't matter what they think your reputation is. Whatever they might say to try to discourage you from getting to Jesus, ignore the opinion of others. They wanted to shut him up. They wanted him to continue with the silent treatment that uh, they had uh, uh, demanded from beggars like Bartimaeus. But notice, instead, he cried out more. He cried out louder. Though the crowd tried to silence him, he realized that the only thing that mattered was getting to Jesus. And he knew that Jesus really cared. And in fact, he did, because in verse 49, Jesus stood still. He stopped dead in his tracks. And he called Bart uh, to him. And so he knew Jesus cared. And Jesus was the only thing that mattered to him at that moment. So the point is this. Get to Jesus. And don't worry about what other people think. There's a third lesson here. In verses 47 to 50, I will not read them again. But in those verses, you come to the conclusion that this blind beggar was a great man of faith, really. And I would say this, here's the lesson. Believe Jesus will. What do I mean by that? He didn't hesitate, even with the pushback from the crowd. He didn't hesitate getting to Jesus because he knew who Jesus was. Twice he called, Jesus, thou son of David. That is specifically a messianic title for the Lord. He knew that Jesus was Israel's Messiah, or he would never have addressed him, Jesus, son of David. 
And so he knew who Jesus was. And as a result, he believed not only that Jesus could heal his blindness, but he believed that Jesus would. And so the lesson is, believe that Jesus will. You note what he does in the 50th verse. He casts away his garment. That's his coat. He casts away his garment, and he rose and came to Jesus. That is an important action that I think we could easily just ignore and pass over. How important a coat was in that day. So important that it really had to do with a person's survival. It actually was a blanket at night to protect a person from the cold. That's why in the Torah, uh, if you were taking something as collateral for a loan, you would not take the person's coat without returning it at night before the sun went down and the cold uh, came upon them. That was against uh, the, the law of Moses. And that's how important the coat was. He threw that coat aside. Not only that, a beggar would spread out that coat on his lap in order to hold the money that would be dropped uh, into it. And perhaps, we're not certain about this, but it's likely that that beggar's coat was also distinctive that marked him as a beggar. And so the fact, as verse 50 says, that he cast that aside, here's what he's doing. He is in faith casting aside his old identity, his old way of life. Symbolically, uh, he is doing that. Having met Jesus, he is symbolically saying, I don't need this anymore. It's a symbol of a man that is putting absolute dependence upon Jesus to give him a totally new life. That's exactly what Jesus does for all believers. He gives us a totally new life. Jesus is your new life. When you receive him, your old life passes away and he becomes your new life. Look at verse 50 again uh, and think of it this way. He discarded whatever would have hindered him. Those coats were long and heavy. And I'm reminded of that verse or verses in Hebrews chapter 12, seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience or endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Discard whatever is hindering you from getting to Jesus, from having an encounter with him. Don't let anything hold you back as he cast aside that coat. Get rid of anything that would hold you back from chasing Jesus. In fact, that's a good motto of life. Be a Jesus chaser. Chase him with your whole heart, and don't let anything hinder you from doing that. Your personal limitations or your doubts or fears and anxieties, you know, those coats, uh, it, they if you had them on, they certainly wouldn't enable you to get anywhere very quick. In fact, you would have to take them and pull them up and tuck them into your belt in order to move more freely. Don't get entangled. Don't let things entangle you and trip you up from getting to Jesus. Discard whatever hinders. In Luke's account, and I'll turn there myself, you don't have to, but I want you to listen to Luke's, uh, this blind uh, beggar, Bartimaeus, is in all three of what is called the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke. In Luke 18, here's what we read in the 43rd verse. After Jesus healed him, gave him his sight, it says, and immediately he received his sight and he followed him. That is, Bart followed Jesus. He followed him glorifying God. 
be grateful to Jesus. That's the first thing he did when he was healed. He praised the Lord. He glorified God. There's a verse that I want to share with you or just remind you of in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, where we read this, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It's easy to give thanks to the Lord when things are going your way. When things are going well, when you have, when you feel like you're being blessed, but in everything give thanks, he says. Be grateful to Jesus. And then in the getting back to Mark's account, in that 52nd verse, Jesus, after he received his sight, uh, Jesus healed him, and he says to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And it says, and immediately he received his sight. And listen, he followed Jesus in the way. He followed Jesus in his way. Follow Jesus wherever. That's another powerful truth. It's an instant choice that he made at that moment when he was healed to follow Jesus where he wasn't going back home. He wasn't going back to the old place. He wasn't going back to his old ways, his old life, his old belongings, his familiar surroundings, because now he knew his old life was over. And by the way, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Obviously, Jesus knew what he wanted. But he asked him that because that's a valid question. Because if Jesus healed him, he'd no longer be able to sit around and, and uh, just have people give him money. He'd have to now go find a job. His whole life would be really totally changed and turned upside down. And uh, so it was really a valid question. Do you really want your sight? You know what this is going to, your old life is going to, pass away. You're going to have a totally new life now. It's a valid question. You know, this is something that we need to understand and really, I guess, need to tell people when we give them the gospel. You realize if you trust Christ, you're going to be a new person. Your life is going to be totally turned upside down. Everything's going to change. It's going to change for the better, but it's going to change nonetheless. And are you willing to follow Jesus wherever? It was an instant choice that this man made as a result of being healed. And look, when thoughts of your old life, your old ways tempt you, remember Jesus healed you. He's your healer. Jesus rescued you from destruction. Jesus rescued you from uh that life that uh, was going nowhere except on a fast track to hell, really. And he rescued you, and he restored you, and he gave you a permanent new life, and that new life is actually himself. So follow Jesus wherever, wherever he leads. And then the last truth that I want to uh, share with you is also from Luke's account and that 43rd verse. It says that he followed Jesus, glorifying God. And listen to this. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. Reveal Jesus to others. We talk so much about ourselves, and it's not about you. It's about the Lord. And when others see how God responds to your faith and miraculous power, it brings glory to the Lord because they know it's it's not you, it's him that has done this. Remember, the disciples asked Jesus about that other blind man in John 9, who sinned, him or his parents? And Jesus said, neither. This man was born blind for the glory of God. And then we see what, what that means, what that's about. You know, your broken life 
your brokenness is a deliberate thing. It lets God's light shine in a dark world. It's meant to make Jesus known through the change that he brings in your life. Obviously, the the people around him didn't care about Bartimaeus, but Jesus did, and he met his need. He cares, and he meets you and me in our messed up lives, and he gives us what the prophet says is beauty in place of ashes. Instead of letting other people or your old life define you, let Jesus define you, not your sin. Jesus asked Bart what he wants. <laughs> Remember what you truly need. Remember what you truly need. It's not that you need your problems to vanish, but you need Jesus. And whatever will accomplish you having a regular meeting with Jesus is the greatest thing that could ever happen to you, even if it means that you stay blind or whatever. The uh, poet Henry David Thoreau, he said, the mass of men lead quiet lives of desperation. I wonder, have you any level of desperation in your life? And if so, what are you desperate for? Here's a man that was desperate. And he got to Jesus at all costs. And his life was never the same. Let's pause a moment and pray.